Hello, hello. Welcome back to Zebra Force. Last month, January 2024, I released an EP called New Year New Z, and I have a song on it called West Coast, and it's uh, one of my favorites that I've released at all, really. Uh, and I was talking to a friend, and he was like, I love what you did on West Coast. That synth really sounds like a guitar. And I was like, wait, no, 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 that is a guitar. And so I thought it would be a good idea to do a little track rundown video, talk about how I got that guitar tone, and uh, maybe go through some of the other little things that I've done throughout the whole song, yeah? Let's do it. So the whole song relies on this guitar tone. It plays the entire song. That is the main basis of the track. And I originally started out with just one guitar channel here. And when I went into the mix phase, I split it into these three, the bass, fuzz, and clean that you see here. But I'll show you what I did in just the one channel first. So if I bring down one of these tracks, just copy and paste, and uh, if we work on this demo channel here, uh, I'm just going to solo this. So if you've listened to the song, you might be able to tell that that is a little bit different than the final product, and that's why I split it into three channels, so that I could further dial things in. But originally, it was just this Ableton group. I've got the clean, fuzz, and bass, much like what you see over here. The clean and the bass has a THU slate. Let's start with the clean tone. I'm going to solo this. Sounding like a guitar comes mostly from this clean tone. I think without this, the song would sound very different. So I'm very happy that I kept that in there. Moving on to the fuzz. It's really just saturation and compression. That's all I have here. That's It's literally just my dry, direct input guitar signal into a saturator and a compressor. That's all that's running on that channel. And then the bass... All it is is the fake bass guitar preset. This is still that same uh, exact guitar DI signal just uh, duplicated three times. I don't think I changed anything here. It's literally just the octaver and, and that's that. And that's that whole, that whole stack, right? But uh, what I did to really make the song shine in the end was I split everything up. So you can actually see that same group here. Like, let's start with the bass channel. I've got that sunglass fuzz with bass. That was what I named it. Uh, and I just removed the other two channels, so I only have that one. And um, I added an R bass for some harmonics, uh, some harmonic intensity. I, of course, sidechained to the kick, and I also sidechained to the snare a little bit. Here's what it sounds like with all of that. Let's move to a different part of the song, yeah? Excuse the little tiny pops in the, uh, in the audio recording. That's because I am one computer down on my two computer recording setup. I'm doing all of this on a laptop right now for the time being, so apologies. But as you can see, sounds a lot more like a bass. Moving on through the fuzz track, as you can see, same saturation compression, but I added a wider plugin at 130%, very, very wide. And again, side chain to the kick and snare. Let's see what I got on this C6 side chain. Looks like I'm 
pushing a little bit of the highs, bringing down a little bit of uh, the uh, high mids, and that is definitely to give some space for the vocal. And on the clean track, um, same thing, THU Slate, uh, but then I've added a wider. This one is less wide at 46%. One of my uh, go-to plugins for widening, super easy. It's, you know, it's one knob. It's nice and easy. You don't really have to do too much. I do warn that if you are going to use a plugin like that in your projects that you don't overuse it, Every single time I'm like, oh, just throw a wider plugin on there. I almost always overuse it, and it's just very easy. It's it's so easy to put it on everything and forget that you're putting it on everything. So don't put it on everything, especially when you're working in headphones, because you for you totally forget. Again, side chain to the kick and snare, and we've got a side chain here doing the same thing uh, as the fuzz. And all together, we've got Now, I've also got all of these running through a room reverb. This is Verb Suite Classics on the warm drum space. Uh, and I, I think I have just about everything running through that. Um, even, yeah, I've, I've got drums, I've got the guitars, I've got the piano, and a little bit of the vocal as well. Something that I really like to do, especially when I'm working with sounds that weren't recorded together in the same room or were recorded uh, completely through MIDI, so that sort of thing, uh, just to add that humanization element, I like to put everything in a, a digital room together, and that's where that comes from. But since we're here talking about tones, let's go through the drums and the vocal and, uh, and the piano, yeah? For the drum source, I'm using uh, Addictive Drums 2, Fairfax Volume 2 on the Packed Salmon kit. I really, I actually hate this kit. I really do not like the way this kit sounds, and this song actually started off as a joke, but then I created the beat that the song is based off of. And I just thought, you know what, why not? Let's make a track out of this. Fun fact, this drum pattern was inspired by Collard Greens by Schoolboy Q and Kendrick Lamar. Uh, I really liked the way that the, the kick and hat go back and forth, so I wanted to do something like that. And I've got the kick and the snare going out of Addictive Drums and into their own channels so that I can uh, use them for side chaining with the other tracks on the, on the song. And this clicking track is actually not being used at all. It was there because I have stick clicks on the Addictive Drums MIDI track, but I thought that I was going to use them to, to mix a little bit, but I guess I just never made it through that. Then we go to the drum bus group. We've got a little bit of saturation. Just an easy one knob saturation plug-in. This is actually turned up really high. Um, I'm curious to know what this sounds like without saturation. I'm <clears throat> I'm gonna shut off all of my drum bus plugins here. Wow. That's really small. Yeah, no wonder I thought this was going to be a joke song. <laughs> but then, here it is with just saturation, no slam pup or anything else. It's already so much warmer. I love the way that sounds. Add in the slam pup, though.
Yeah, I love that drum sound so much, and it's so beautiful that I was able to turn something that I I actually hated. I really did not like the <clears throat> excuse me the drum sound for for this. Uh, it was just it's not good. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's a good drum sound. I'm sorry, Addictive Drums. You are my favorite drum plugin. Please, I'm sorry. It's not personal. We've got this sidechain stereo. This doesn't even look like it's doing anything. No, oh, it's sidechain to the vocal, so I'm just pulling down a tiny bit uh, of the vocal frequency range there. That doesn't even look like it's really doing much. For the piano. I haven't listened to this piano track soloed in a while because I finished this song quite a bit ago. But wow, that's it's kind of somber on its own. I've got the old school Rhodes Ableton instrument. Here are my settings. And then uh, side chain to the vocal, bringing down that, that uh, frequency range there to give space for the vocal. And pan to the left, of course. That's it for the piano. It's just a it's just a little little guy there. There's not really much to it. I just like the way that it filled out the the rest of the song. For the vocal, I've got Waves Tune literally only turned on for the first word of the song. Uh, cause I can't sing for shit. Then sibilance to get rid of those pesty sibilant sounds and uh cla vocals fun fact i don't really like the cla plugins they're just it's too much packed into one plugin and i think there's not enough that you can do to dial it in i get that they're supposed to be used by beginners uh and that's great and i still use them every once in a while but I feel like I have to consciously use them knowing that I'm going to be a little bit restricted, which is fine, you know? Limitations breed creativity, right? Let's listen to the dry vocal without any of this. Give me it all or give me nothing, but don't leave me in the woods hunting lost like a savage. I'm you might notice that there's a lot of volume fluctuation in the recording, and that's because I am ho actually holding the microphone uh, in my vocal booth, which I don't have anymore. This was recorded in a completely different space, but uh, I, I wanted the energy of holding a microphone, and I just wasn't getting the verse out the way that I wanted to, um, just either sitting down or standing up in a normal, like, recording environment so i held a a stage microphone which got a lot of variation in um, volume and once i added the compression from cla uh, plus a little bit of my own compression everything was all fixed give me it all or give me nothing but don't leave me in the woods hunting lost like a savage a mild and average but give me a call Then for the vocal stack, um, we've got sibilance again, some EQ. Uh, I think I'm running CLA on everything. It looks like pretty similar settings. All of these are duplications of, of each other. They're just stacked on top with different layers. Let's uh, group this vocal here. West Coast douchebag. Got my hoodie on, selfie stick out. I'm a... My favorite part of this song, hands down, is all of the delays that I put on the vocal, especially in the chorus. Uh, so my, the, my absolute favorite one is this one on the main vocal, uh, which only turns on right there at the, the final word. It's this guy right here, synced to the one. Lots of feedback. Uh, and it's a ping pong, of course. I just want to solo this for a second so you hear what I'm talking about. 
Selfie stick out! And of course, because the feedback is turned so high up, I have to automate it to shut off or else it'll just go forever. Um, but I love that so much. Every time I listen to this song, I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I, I'm so in love with it. The, the rest of the song could sound like shit and I would be happy with that one thing right there. <laughs> And we've got some delay on this backtrack. I don't know why it's called that. I, it seems my organization got a little lost on, on the vocal side of things. Um, but that's it for the chorus. And then uh, we've got the what you gonna do with that, which is uh, just me saying what you gonna do with that. And then I chopped it up. Uh, little EQ, overdrive, and then a delay. What, what, what you gonna do with that? that, that. What, what, what you gonna do with that? And uh, you might have noticed there's a little bit of pitch shifting, like a what, 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 right at the uh, at the beginning of the line there. And that's it for vocals. Uh, aside from the comedy joking, no, seriously, talking just part so over it. Better, bro. But that's all the same stuff. It's all. There's nothing there to talk about. It's all just duplicated tracks. Um, that's uh, that's the whole song. It's very simple. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. I've got a vox verb, vox reverb. Uh, this is verb sweet classics on the natural vocal room. There's my settings, and I've got. Let's see. What you gonna do with that? Go in there, and then the whole vox group, as well. So. That's the entire song. That's my song, West Coast. It was released last January, and you can find it via the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please defenestrate that like button and click subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.